Sometimes I wonder <laughs> because it was too hot in <laughs> the radiation of heat by the mountain. <laughs> you know, even at uh, Bhagwan's seventy-second Aradhana day, uh, the talk by President Dr. Anand. He was talking the same thing, and he gave a very beautiful uh, um, example of um, of body and a jnani. Yeah. So a jnani who is not a body, actually, no one is a body. But the jnani who knows that he is not a body, for him, the body is a burden. because at least the body needs to be fed and he has to look after look after it and uh, and look after it and also to do all those things what the body needs it's like yes. he is a slight disturbance in his place in a way that still there is something needs to be done for the body you know body's interaction with the world body's um needs and he gave this example that it is exactly like someone is wearing a three piece suit in uh, summer month in tiruvannamalai so it is so super hot and <laughs> you are wearing this and uh, you know it was so beautiful the way he said that and uh, it very well explains and so so many gyanis you know once you know the truth you just in a way you are waiting to shed the body whenever it happens like you are not against it but you are not for it and if you see so many gyanis they have left very early in that sense you know some of them have left very very early shankracharya vivekananda yeah. um, swami ram tirath so many of them So Nila Kantan ji, we can start with something you want to. Yeah, start. Bandhogi vasana bandha moksha sya vasana kshaya vasana tum paritya jya moksha titvam apitya jet. This is the advice given by our Rava Sista to Ramji in Yoga Vasista. The states of the mind and the tendencies of the mind go by the name of bondage. Liberation consists of rejecting all those or attenuation of those desires and tendencies. So, what do you do? Cast some vasanas, and also after that, what do you do? Give up the desire for liberation too. So that is how he ends it. Give up the desire for liberation too. and then you can stay put hmm. you know this lineage of sages is innumerable and every time for every one there is a sage who can help in every time even in this day and age as they say we have bhagwan here you know and you ask any bhagwan's devotee even the one who have actually seen him they will say that bhagwan's power is much much more than what it was before and um, dr anand was quoting from uh, one of the old bhagwan's devotees murugnar that we in the body will not be around but in a couple of hundred years after bhagwan left the body that energy will do more miracles and more people will get into a pyidance because of that energy so on that we all know it is happening and who is doing it and who is promoting it and uh, who is uh, taking care of it that perfect substrata that silence through which bhagwan 
came and we all came that power which is unseen which but can be felt and this is so beautiful and we are blessed we are are so blessed that we have fallen into the grace of bhagwan and when you have surrendered to that ultimate power then that power will do everything for you you don't have to do anything but your surrender should be complete if your surrender is um, not complete then that power can't do anything surrender should be complete moment you surrender the mind disappears because mind stays till you think you can do something mind is nothing other than ego mind is doership only when we have confidence that i will do i will achieve until then we have a tool called mind so the moment you surrender mind disappears and that is the path of devotion it is not even a path every one every devotee is a devotion what is devotee devotee means the one who has devotion for some that power in which he believes 100% faith that is devotee devotion surrender is same that devotee is surrender that's why he is called as devotee otherwise bhagwan never made disciples he he they are only devotees power of surrender is so strong so quick so easy when you can't surrender then comes all these self inquiry techniques because the moment you surrender you touch your inner silence only nothing else the moment ego surrenders the mind merges into the silence nothing is left what technique you will use and if the surrender is so difficult then you can look into self inquiry what is self inquiry actually it is not even inquiry it is only self awareness it is that mind which is interested in other things now it is interested in that pure self or if you wish you can call it god but god becomes an object and that is the problem then we always look god somewhere as an object even within we look as an object so duality persist in the word god but when you say self then there can't be two because when you pay attention to something that means there is someone who is paying attention and then there is a thing on which you are paying attention so so there is duality but when we say the one who is paying attention to everything around pay attention to that what does that mean what does that mean and how do you do it and who does it the moment you put this inquiry to abide in self there is a complete shift within that mind which is interested in things outside in the external world which is in pursuit of things and beings now just turns within 
and tries to find out who is the one who is looking for things and beings, attracted to things, having desires, planning. He starts looking, that mind starts looking on whose command I am doing these things. Who is my uh, boss? Who is my employer? So that mind starts paying attention to that uh, employer. That is known as Antarmukhi, looking within. And this pursuit is takes away so much of your energy and time and attention that you are not concerned about what is happening outside externally like as ahem that same which was this mind when it started looking within it starts knowing that the projection from this awareness was creating this illusory ego or a person who is doing things. Actually, nobody finds, when the mind goes within, it never finds a person. That is the beauty of this whole thing. But if you don't try to look within, then there is always this ego, which is instructing the mind, getting entangled in thoughts, planning whole day, next day, 5-year plan, 10-year, 20-year retirement plan, everything it plans. It can plan so many things, it collects things. It is like a hoarder, it hoards one property, 10 property, 100 property, this thing, that thing. People, it collects friends, it collects enemies also, though it doesn't like but... So that collector, then when the mind tries to look into who is who has employed me when it seriously looks within to see on whose command I am working it sees that absolute and dissolves in it and it can't find anyone else but but this happens only when you look within. Because there is nothing but that absolute only. There is nothing else. Actually, there is no duality. There is no one. It is the mind only which tries to look and when it look within and then it finds only that and merges in it and then all that illusion by which it was going on and on and on and thinking and and playing as a servant to something or sometimes overpowering that employer this all game finishes this game stays till you are ignorant you are ignorant till you work like a machine as if someone is guiding you from within, instructing you to do, producing thoughts and you have to act. Till, there, till it continues, there is suffering never ends. There is no end to suffering. You have to go backward. So Ganges starts from Gangotri, goes towards Bay of Bengal. It has to flow upward you have to take energy back into the source and that happens only with grace even this much understanding happens with grace only but once you are convinced yes I need to find out what is there within. Your start of journey and your end of journey is almost at the same time. The gap in between is just also an illusion. 
That is why Kabir says that it will happen. When it will happen, you have, you have put the seed in the soil, you have given everything, now it will blossom when the season is there. And the one who has surrendered never looks into how long it takes. He has already surrendered. He has infinite patience. And he is not looking outside. Always he is looking within. His eyes looks like he is looking outside but not registering anything. They are all also looking within. So something passes by, he has no clue. He will just know faintly. He moves in the word, but not in the word. He is looking within only. It is only first few effortful days or weeks or months. And then it is so natural, there is nothing else. But I'll again tell you, this method is very different from all the methods of meditation. Because other methods are time bound. 15 minutes, half an hour, one hour. But this continues. There's another method which actually is almost 24 hours, which is Japa. That's why there's so much of power in Japa. When you do japa, you start and becomes a japa japa and it continues even in your sleep on its own. And that is why it gives very good results. But the power of japa comes from devotion only, surrender. When you surrender to that name, that name takes you there. Here silence, abiding in that silence within takes you there. What other technique is there in this? There is no technique. If you call it a technique, it is a technique of self-attention. Self-attention becomes self-abidance. While you are paying attention to self, you realize self and then you abide in self. Initial efforts and it becomes natural because there is nothing else. This unruly mind which was going outwardly, which thought that there is someone who is guiding, when it looks within, it only finds the absolute self. Actually, this is not good for you. It is good only for mind, this self-discovery. Self is always the same. You are that always. It is only a medicine for your mind, not for you. The mind which is making noise, it is only medicine for that. You are that pure silence always. You have never changed. Only your mind is creating an illusion in which you are believing, that's all. All this journey and this sorting out business is not yours. It is only your mind. And who created this problem for mind? That supreme self, part of that only, that consciousness, which when entered into the body, 
somehow you can call it conditioning you can call it illusion ignorance somehow it starts believing that i am this body mind and so comes the i thought and then comes you thought we thought me thought my thought mine thought others all this comes after that so when the mind tries to hold on to who is my employer who has employed me it looks within there is no one there except that absolute and in shame and in reverence this mind dissolves it realizes that absolute is running the show there is no need of me planning separately another life into the life you are this infinite life there is no need to have another planning into it it's not like one committee and then the second and third hierarchy in organizations it's not like that tv show in the tv show tv show in a tv show television in television yeah yeah spend time with yourself as much as you can not everyone is fortunate enough to give up everything and sit and even if you are fortunate your mind will be there and it will attack you more in that better you have less time and then better you are engaged so you know where your energy is going is still outside or internally live in the world but not touching anything then this dream will end everything is inside nothing is outside what you see outside is coming from inside only an answer is also inside only guru who is outside is coming from inside to tell you to go inside that's all role of a guru is not more than that who have faith in teaching who believe in it who are interested in it we call that they have grace grace on them and when they look within they will find everything there it's not in books books have maps books have directions but you have to take this path within and when you go within it's not like you go and you touch and it's done and it can happen with rare people like bhagwan mostly this journey is upside down back and forth to start with you have to find the way within because we haven't gone home for so long there are cobwebs you know like in 
forest when people keep walking through the same path a road is formed but for too long if nobody has gone all the bushes creepers come through and no path is visible but with your antar drashti when you keep looking wither within keep looking keep looking in the darkness the glow starts coming just by your attention by your interest by you staying there it happens it is like all our life we think we are that shadow of that self mind is nothing but the shadow of that pure self chasing these unrealistic dreams in the unrealistic world moment we look within we find ourselves as that eternal self which is never born will never die is eternal it has no name no form which you can't perceive as an object which you can't see with your eyes which is not an experience which survives even when the body goes away it stays with body and without body body is dependent on it body is because of it all what you are seeing as yourself and others and objects in this world all is coming from your mind only and you are beyond mind when the mind becomes your slave when the ignorance disappears then what is left is only reality only truth prevails now this knowledge this truth is not like a knowledge what people think about a concept in mind this knowledge this reality is only you there is no one other than you but you not the body but if you believe in body then all the bodies are you only all objects are you only without any difference there is no difference in anything all the differences to you appear because you have this illusion that you are separate otherwise there is nothing separate than you it is pure undifferentiated awareness only you know in hindi there is a proverb 
सावन के अंधे को सब कुछ हरा हरा दिखता है विच मीन्स द वन हु इज ब्लाइंड फॉर स्प्रिंग एवरी थिंग अपियर्स ग्रीन टू हिम द वन हु इज अबाइडिंग इन अवेयरनेस एवरी थिंग इज अवेयरनेस ओनली एवरी थिंग बिकॉज इट इज ओनली दैट when you know yourself you know that there are no others to sort out all the mystery in this world answer to all the questions of the world to live a life without any doubt only thing we need is to know ourselves that's all if you want to get rid of all suffering of disease and mind and everything just know the self to me knowing self is answer to all questions of all sorts philosophical questions materialistic questions knowledge questions personal questions no self and then you know everything it's remedy of all problems knowing self is so harmonious wherever you are whoever the people are whatever the situation is nothing affects because truth is always the same truth never needs any type of qualification that you have to be rich or you need to know some scripture or you have to do this much of that thing people talk about peace talks peace and talk cannot be together peace only comes in silence 
when you touch your silence, when you know your silence, then you are peace. Love begets love, peace begets peace. Be that peace only. When you are in peace, you don't have to say any word. Peace will percolate everywhere. Abide in your heart, stay in your heart. When we stay in our pure heart, we are earning punya for our mind. This question of liberation, desire for moksha, all this shows duality only, ego only. These questions never arises. You just have to look within. Don't stop till you find the source. People talk about control of mind. When mind has darshan of self, it is end of the mind. For mind to merge in self, it has to go within. For it to go within, you have to stop giving task to this poor mind to serve your ego.
unfortunately it cannot do both things to look within and to serve ego you as ego as we stop giving all work to the mind so it can start its journey of disappearance so it can have darshan of self and you give all that work to the mind because of your petty desires attachments greed because of your fear of things sometime we give negative work because of jealousy greed anger all these are attributes of ego more or less present in all people with ego when you allow mind to retire and when this ego has some faith in absolute that it will take care when the mind is resting then your journey starts then this mind who is not being given any work goes within takes a deep dive within and this dive is its last dive dive of death death of mind and it is not something to feel sorrow mind has merged in the self mind has attained eternal peace now there is no one at home mind gone cause is gone due to which this body came into being only pure self is left shining within shining everywhere pure satvik untainted now shiva dances in its full glory within you nataraj that shiva dancing that can only dance when the ego is finished
what is most worshipable for a sage the body in which he has found this glory there is no owner of that body now no ego can answer anyone's question now without giving any task to the mind allowing your mind to deep dive within allowing it to merge in the pure self no trace of ego left you attain to this pure bliss pure ananda unconditional love you are this pure silence
प्योर सेल्फ has no power to accept or reject whatever it is it is once known yourself something gets purer and purer in it. when you know the self first time you fall in love with your own self you admire it there is no boredom in it pure ecstasy unending joy joy without a cause when you have no clue and you have no control
always abide in this pure silence. Silence of self. Om Shant, Shant, Shant.